Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the dot product. So begin with the definition. Let vector a be equal to a vector with n components. We'll identify those as a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, all the way up through a sub n. And let vector b be equal to a vector with n components identified as b sub 1, b sub 2, b sub 3, all the way up through b sub n. Then the dot product of a and b as defined as a dot b. And when you do a dot product, you want to make sure that dot is big and bold so that it's not confused with any other piece of notation. So it's a dot b, don't be shy, big bold dot. a dot b equals a1 times b1, so that's just scalar multiplication, plus a2 times b2, plus a3 times b3, all the way up through the nth component, a sub n times b sub n. So there is our dot product defined, and with that in mind, I'd like to do an example. So we're given vector a with three components, 1, 2, 3, and vector b with three components, negative 1, 0, 4. Let's find the dot product a dot b. So to begin, we'll do the sum of component-wise multiplication. So we begin with 1 times a negative 1, plus second components, 2 times 0, plus our third components, 3 times 4. And if we work that out, the answer is 11. So one thing to notice about the dot product is that it always produces a scalar quantity. So I'll make a note of that right here. The dot product always produces a scalar quantity, like a number, like 11 or 5, something like that. So we take in two vectors, and what comes out is some number. Okay, let's take a look at some of the properties of the dot product. We'll begin with two assumptions. We'll assume that a, b, and c are vectors, and assume that k is a real scalar. Now, sometimes you'll see the notation k is an element of the real numbers. Okay, so this notation, this this e or euro looking symbol, that's actually mathematical notation for is an element of. And this big bold R is our set of real numbers. And we'll identify a set of real numbers. And we'll be using that throughout our course. Okay, so we've got uh, several properties here, five properties in total. The first property is that A dot A equals the magnitude of A squared. In other words, a vector dot product with itself is just the magnitude squared. Now you might be wondering why that's the case. So let's let a be a vector with n components. Okay, and if we do the dot product of a with itself, our first scalar multiplication is just going to be a1 times a1. And we're going to add that to a2 times a2, all the way up through a sub n times a sub n. In other words, this is just a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a sub n squared. And this looks really familiar. Okay, This looks like the sum a1 squared plus a sub 2 squared all the way up through a sub n squared. Okay, if we square root that and square that, that is exactly what the magnitude of a all squared works out to be. Okay, let's look at some of the other properties. So the second property says that the dot product is commutative. a dot b is equal to b dot a. Third property says that we've got kind of a distributive property here. So a dot the sum of b plus c equals a dot b plus a dot c. We also have an associative property of scalar scalars. So we've got a scalar k times a, that's scalar multiplication of vectors, dot b, equals a scalar k times a dot b, and that's also equal to a dot scalar k times b. 
Lastly, we've got a zero property, so the zero vector dot a equals a dot the zero vector, and the answer there is a zero without the arrow. Remember, this is a this is a real number, whereas this zero over here, this is the zero vector. And for that reason, I have a arrow over that zero and no, no arrow over this zero because it's a scalar. Okay, we're ready for a theorem, our first theorem. So this theorem says that if theta is the angle between vector a and vector b, then the dot product a dot b equals the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine of theta. So in this picture, theta is sitting right there between those vectors. And if we label these vectors, we could say this, this red vector there, that's our vector a, and then this other vector that's a little bit steeper perhaps, this pink one, we'll call that vector b. Now in the next video, I'll prove this theorem.